Dear ladies and gentlemen, it is my utmost pleasure to welcome you to the training course in regenerative medicine organized by Excella Scientific. I would like to thank Mr. Ivan Lopez Vitolas, my new friend, for inviting me to be part of this exciting project. Over the next two days, you have the utmost opportunities to learn from doctors of different specialties about cell therapy in general, as well as clinical applications, especially for traumas and in orthopedic problems. I would like to take this opportunity to tell you briefly about the secret world of stem cell therapy, which is also the title of my recently published book, subtitled, What You Need to Know About the Health, Beauty and Anti-Aging Breakthrough of Stem Cell Therapy. The book can be found everywhere where books are sold, including Amazon Target, in other places. Most and foremost, let me start by stating that in my personal opinion, regenerative medicine, which includes stem cell therapy, is likely one of the most important discoveries in modern medicine, and it will accompany us for several decades to come. While stem cell therapy in the United States is not FDA approved yet, with the exception of stem cell transplantation for certain forms of blood cancer. Please be aware that every single published study using stem cell therapy for a wide variety of different pathologies has shown significant benefits. If you Google the term stem cell therapy, as I just did a few minutes ago, by the way, the following hits are coming out. The first one is an information piece from the Mayo Clinic about stem cells and stem cell therapy in general, which is great. The second hit is from a Cayman Island clinic representing an advertising for that particular clinic for stem cell therapy, stating that the doctor in this particular clinic is considered the worldwide pioneer in stem cell research. However, um, that's obviously not true because he has never published any single study on that. And the third hit of interest is a warning from the FDA. One might ask, why is the FDA consumer warning that high up? And why is the FDA so vehemently against the therapy, which so far has helped many patients in the past and may be beneficial for thousands more in the future? There might be several reasons for that, but mainly the fact that there is a lack of large-scale clinical trial data available and robust studies proving the safety, tolerability, and efficacy of modern stem cell therapy is lacking. For this reason, I personally would encourage everyone who is considering stem cell therapy to make sure that, first, your patients know that this is not an approved therapy, but is still considered experimental, and that your patients sign an appropriate informed consent form. Second, that you as a providers stay away from false claims of cures of diseases, as we have not seen any cures, but rather a significant improvement of symptoms, of quality of life, and likely a reduction of the progression of many chronic degenerative diseases, especially those which are age-related, such as heart failure, Parkinson's, among many others. Thirdly, I encourage you to conduct your treatments in a systematic fashion, and I even invite you to share your clinical achievements and your data with us in order to expand our clinical data pool to demonstrate safety, efficacy, and even to use data for scientific publications together with you. Please allow me to briefly tell you about my own experiences without sounding arrogant, of course. I think I can say I was among the first in the world to use fetal cells, including stem cells, in the experimental setting. As an example, we extracted the fetal cardiomyocytes of the fetuses of pregnant rats and then transplanted these fetal cells, including stem cells, into recipient animals that had induced heart attacks a few weeks earlier. We could then demonstrate two things. First, these cells can survive in the host for at least four to six months, as measured by a so-called fish staining method, where we could detect the Y chromosome originating 
from male fetuses and transplanting those into female recipients. Second, the ejection fraction significantly improved in those animals after heart attacks who received cell transplantation compared to placebo-treated animals. This was one of the first publications that came out and which then created an enormous hype and the clinical interest of stem cell therapy, especially for the treatment of heart diseases. As a cardiologist and a transplant cardiologist, I've been involved in several studies using stem cells for treatments, especially for congestive heart failure. Even though every single study showed benefits, there are still a lot of unknown and open questions, including, but not limited to, which cell type is the best to use, which route of administration is ideal, and what is the number of cells as well as the frequency of applications to obtain the best results. We just don't know yet. At the current time, we know that embryonic stem cells are omnipotent, meaning they have the ability to, to develop into every single tissue. The use of embryonic cells, however, is very controversial, discussed, as you know, especially from an ethical and religious point of view. And outside basic research study is not in current use anywhere. The use of what we call induced pluripotent stem cells, or IPS, opened the door for using adult cells, such as skin cells, and transformed those to embryonic-like stem cells with the ability to be pluripotent done by genetic manipulation. Early clinical studies are very promising. However, there are still questions regarding immune responses, antigenicity, and mutagenesis, meaning the development of cancers. The use of allogenic stem cells from donors, from umbilical cord tissue and blood, among other tissues, has now opened the doors to an almost unlimited supply off the shelf with likely multipotent or even close to pluripotent characteristics. We have published a few smaller studies over the last couple of years using allogenic stem cells, for example, for the treatment of COVID-19, in a placebo-controlled randomized double-blind fashion, as well as studies on the treatment of rectal dysfunction, and more studies are to follow. Overall, every single study was positive. I would like to encourage you to be curious about the potential of stem cell therapy, even in regards to fighting aging, which nowadays we might even consider not just a natural process of biology, but it is the number one risk factor for the development of diseases, frailty, loss of functional capabilities, and death. For that reason, we are working scientifically in our Anti-Aging and Stem Cell Institute in Beverly Hills, and now in close co collaboration with Mr. Ivan Lopez Vitolas and his group, including Seller Scientific Laboratories. Enjoy the next two days. Thank you for your attention.